Hello, in this video we're going to do an example of writing a complex number in what's called polar form. This is also called trig form. Let's go ahead and work through its solution. So a complex number in the form a plus bi is said to be in polar form or trig form if you can write it as follows. R parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. Actually, when you write it as follows, because you can write every complex number in polar form. So when you have a complex number and you write it in this form, we say it's in polar form. And there's a bunch of formulas you can memorize for this. I just like to memorize the formula for R. R is called the modulus of the complex number. And the formula for R is R equals square root of A squared plus B squared. So in our particular example, uh, A is three. Pretty easy to see that. A is equal to three. And B is the coefficient of I. So there's a one here. So B is going to be equal to one. So using this information, we have R equal to the square root of, so A is three, so we get three squared, plus, and then B is one, so we get one squared. R is equal to square root of nine plus one, which is just the square root of 10. Pretty easy. This is actually the distance between the complex number and the origin in the complex plane. So the distance of square root of 10 from the origin of the complex plane. That's how far three plus i is from the origin. Now we have to find theta. So to find theta, I like to just basically take our complex number and then just force it to be equal to the polar form. So let's do that. So in other words, we have three plus i, and then we set it equal to r, which is the square root of 10, in parentheses, and then we have cosine theta plus i sine theta. And this is a very like primitive way of doing it. Most textbooks have a bunch of formulas and there's one involving tangent and some books have formulas for cosine and sine. I just prefer to do it just from like, I don't know, just a little bit more raw. Just write down what it means to be in polar form. Got your formula for r, go from there. Distribute the square root of 10, so you get three plus i, square root of 10, uh, cosine theta and um, this is going to be plus i square root of 10 sine theta and now two uh, complex numbers are equal when their real and imaginary parts are equal so basically that would mean that you take three and you set it equal to this you get three equals square root of 10 cosine theta. And then here you get, um, there's a one here. You get one equals square root of 10 sine theta. This means that the cosine of theta is equal to three over root 10. Sine of theta is equal to one over root 10. And so now it's where it's gonna get a little bit tricky here, okay? Because uh, normally when you get to a problem, when you have problems like this, uh, you know, the problems from textbooks, you know, they're, they're set up to where you can just look at the unit circle and you can find the answer. Um, this problem here is, is not so, right? That's not the case. You can't just memorize the angle. That's not gonna work. So we're gonna to have to do something else. And that's something else is, let's just think about the tangent here. So what is the tangent? Tangent is dividing these, right? So if we look at the tangent of theta, we need a single trig function. That's, that's the key here. We take sine divided by cosine. So it's one over root 10 over three over root 10. This is equal to, it's gonna be equal to one over root 10. And when you divide by three over the square root of 10, you're basically multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is the square root of 10 over three. You get one over, one over three. So we have that, the tangent of theta, the tangent of theta is equal to one over three. That's gonna be the tangent of theta. So that would imply that theta is equal to the arc tangent of one over three. And that's going to be our angle. 
that's going to be our angle. That's the angle we're going to use. We can actually figure out what this is. I'm just gonna grab my calculator and put it in there really quickly for you because if you wanted to know what it is, the calculator returns in radians 0.32 or so. So this is approximately, uh, approximately 0.32. I'm gonna leave it like this though, as arctan one third. Now we can write down our answer in polar form. In polar form, uh, it's gonna be r and then cosine theta plus i sine theta. So our r was the square root of 10. So the final answer is going to be square root of 10, parentheses, cosine of the arc 10 of one third plus I sine times the arc 10 of one third. And then you want to close that parentheses again, <laughs> right? So, because that's the outer parentheses and that would be the polar form, pretty ridiculous. Probably not what you expected um, because pretty much almost always, you when you get to this step, you know, you get something nice, you can just look at the unit circle and it works. But when you don't get something nice, uh, one way to proceed is to look at the tangent function and use that to find an angle. It's a little bit easier to solve this equation here than it is to solve the system of equations up here, uh, especially when uh, you have something something like this. And uh, by the way, this answer makes sense, right? This answer makes sense. Um, everything here is uh, in quadrant one. Remember, on the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate. So um, you know, it, we're good. We're in quadrant one, and that makes sense because three plus i uh, is also in quadrant one. So all is all is okay, all right? So we're in quadrant one, and everything is good. Hopefully, this video has been helpful, and you've learned some mathematics. Until next time, good luck and take care.